Hey everybody! I know it's been a little while since I've done a scrapbook process video, but I have the time today and I'm really kind of excited to share this layout process with you. Um, this is actually um, finally getting around to scrapbooking my shoulder replacement. And I, so it's kind of a big story. So I am working with getting the right pictures. I've got a lot of pictures, but I'm going to use flip flaps because the sketch that I have doesn't have as many pictures in it, but I'm going to have flip flaps all over the place in this. So if you aren't familiar with me, um, I the, do the scrapbook with me's twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays from three to five. I give everybody a sketch ahead of time and they then can join me and do it or they can do it on their own. So this is the sketch from today and um, I wanted to walk you through my process. So this is a 12, uh, two page 12 by 12 sketch from Page Maps and um, I work in eight and a half by 11. So what I have here and all the numbers you see on this are my conversions. So during the scrapbook with me's, we'll usually go over what are the sizes for the different elements of the sketch for um, a 12 by 12 page, but then I do my own kind of conversions to eight and a half by 11. So I have my conversions kind of written down here. I'm just gonna put my pictures aside and what I've already pre-cut a few things, pre-stamped a few things just to speed this up. But what I'm gonna start with is of course my base pages. And I'm using paper from the Skylark Bring Back My Pack collection that Close to My Heart had. Um, I had some in my stash and I just kind of felt that that would work really well with this layout. So I'm gonna cut down my base paper for this layout to eight and a half by 11. And I've been enjoying using this size for the past couple of years. It's just been a challenge for myself to kind of think outside of the box and figure out how can I change a layout to work with this smaller page size. And it's been fun. You know, I, I usually each year try to come up with some kind of challenge to myself for how I'm going to create my layouts, whether it's I do them on a monthly recap or I do them on kind of random pictures. But the past couple years I've been doing the eight and a half by 11s. So my next paper I'm doing is gonna be this large background paper. And I wanna make sure that I have this element remaining in the, on the page. So this is going, I'm gonna keep this. So first I'm gonna cut this because this spans both pages. So I'm looking at this, this to be, of course, eight and a half by 11, but with seven on the left and one and a half on the right. So I'm gonna take this down to eight and a half by 11. And then I am gonna turn this so that I can cut one, one and a half inches off that will be on my right hand page. So that's gonna be what spans the two pages. Now the next piece I'm gonna do is this large pattern here. And I've got this is going to be five inches tall. And I'm gonna use this paper. I've already used the back side of it to do some scallop strips, which I'll cut down in a little bit. But I'm gonna have, this is gonna be you know, five inches tall this down okay. and I am going to do this as let's see I want about to do four inches on my left page and then I am going to have about seven inches on my right. So I'll cut that down, put some scrap aside. So I'm just going to cut that again. I'm not completely enamored of that size. So, you know, this is what happens. I, I'll use up some paper. So I'm going to have four inches on the left. And yeah, I think I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I'm actually going to keep it at seven. So I've got that. Now my last couple of pieces of paper is going to be this piece, the dot pattern that they have here. Now that's going to be three and a half. I'll make sure I've got the, I don't want to keep the pattern. So this is going to be three and a half. 
put that aside. And then I'm going to have a piece that is going to be two inches. And this will also kind of overlap on, you know, go under some of the other papers. So don't worry if things aren't exactly correct. And I'm going to do another two inch for my right hand page. So, and I've already got my journal box cut and I've got, I did my title, which is, um, I stamped, I did a white, a three inch white circle and stamped it using this, uh, it's a reward your waste, um, stamping set called dimensional storytelling, which I really like this. And then I did a scallop die that I have out of an additional paper from Skylark. And then I used some of the, um, I stamped this in intense black ink. And then I used some of the Colorista pencils to kind of color it in. And I get, did a little bit, um, some shading on the bottom to give it a little bit of a darker look. So that's there. So let me start with assembling this page. Put my pieces aside. And I'll be cutting down that scallop in a bit. So we're going to start with this. And once, sometimes it takes longer just to kind of figure out the sizing and placement of everything. But once you get it going, it uh, definitely helps. And I do, if you ever look to do like an 8.5 by 11, I actually created a chart with um, conversion for 8.5 by 11. And I, I do have a link on my blog to a downloadable PDF for the conversion. So you can always um, go there and follow the links to it. So there's my basic piece. So I'll just pull this sketch out so that you guys can refer to it as I'm going along. So my next pieces being my larger green pieces. And those of course meet in the center. I love this Skylark paper. This is just, I love the colors of this. And it's roughly a little bit more than halfway up. And I could use my mat to kind of line it up. But I don't really, I'm not really completely worried about it. But I'm going to do it a little bit more than halfway. Because I did make my title um, circle a little bigger than they show on this sketch because I of course was stamping an in image and wanted to make sure it would fit. And line that up. Alright. Now I'm gonna take my little two by three and a half pieces for each side. Those are gonna be roughly in the center of this. All right, that's one. Now, one thing I tend to do, I try to match things up, and I'll do this. I'll put the two pieces back to back, and I'm gonna tuck this under so that this will line up with where that piece came from. So, now I've got my basic page. Now what I'm going to do next, before I do my photos, of course I'm going to put my journal block, but I'm, now that I'm looking at this, I realized I made this a little bit too big. That's always with the backside. I, what I had done is already did some lines with my ruler, but not a worry. Easy to cut down. I can redo the lines whenever. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit smaller because I, I want the photo to be able to kind of overlap a little bit. So, I'll cut a little bit off, and I can redraw the lines at any point in time, not a problem. And then I'm going to put, yeah, that works better. So, I'm going to put my, photo, my journal block down. Okay. Well, I've got a chance to see. Yep, I made a mess when I, a little oops when I was stamping, but hey, that's what the back side of white paper is for there because this is going to go and I may have it overlap and cut a little bit we'll see so flip flaps if you're not familiar with these these are a great way to get extra photos on a page and so what I'm doing here is I've got a whole bunch of photos I'm putting 
basically I'm putting all photos. My flip flops are going to be filled with photos. What I do is this. This is my method for flip flops. So I'm going to take my two pictures and I'm going to adhere them together. I just, I find it goes in the flip flop a lot easier. And, or if you're using cardstock, you know, you put a cardstock on the back, get this in. Okay. My big scar. <laughs> so this is going to go in my flip flap. Now, if you notice what I do is I, um, cut the ends at an angle of my flip flap. And that is, so when I've placed it behind a photo, a mat or another picture, you don't see the edges of the flip flap adhesive. Just kind of a technique that I've done for a while. And I'm a little bit one for making sure everything lines up. So what I do, and this is how I work with flip flaps. I take a bead of adhesive along the top of my mat or my photo, whatever is going to be on the back. Then I'm going to line up my photo or my cardstock adhere. So now I've kind of created the flip flap, but not on the page yet. Now I'm going to adhere it to the page. So take that little adhesive off. Now line up the photo where I want it to go. And let's just make sure everything is all lined up. And adhere it down. And now that works. So now I'm going to do the same thing with my other photos. So just be very careful when you are adhering one photo to the next that it's opens in the form you want. And so you can see it. Yeah, this was my a long time coming this process. And if you can see by this picture, I have a replacement part in my shoulder. <laughs> a long time coming with arthritis in my shoulders that was causing more and more problems and they finally had to do replacement. And if you can't tell by the picture, this is actually reverse replacement. So the socket is where the ball was and the ball is where the socket was. So it was kind of an interesting to come out of anesthesia and be told that, here you go. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that was a little, a little odd. Now, if you're concerned about this, you could always put a four by six piece of paper and then adhere your photos back to back that way. I'm not too worried about it. If I do have a problem with it, I can always take it out and re redo it. So put this together and, or you could use separate, you know, three by four flip flaps. So this is going to be next to this in here. There's, I'm putting my two sets of photos in here. Oops, just get that nice and tight. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with this bead of adhesive on each one. Lay them down in place. Hold them in place and then put the flap there. Now that I've got that set, now I'm going to just take off the backing. Adhere my other side photos. Now this sketch shows one photo that goes across the two pages. I'm not a big fan of that technique. That's kind of not really me, but I do like it. Certainly I find I can do that better with landscape photos than of course with photos of people. So <laughs> that's why this one is not going across the page. So here I'm going to just make sure that this is lined up because once this goes down, it's not going anywhere. Because of course the adhesives from flip, the flip flap pockets are very strong. So now I've got my all of my photos in my flip flaps. Now I'm going to embellish and I won't make you guys sit and watch me do my journaling. No worries about that. So I wanted to measure this before I cut. So that's why I didn't really cut these down at first. So I am going to take that. And the nice thing about this is there's a little lip that I can adhere this behind. Stick this behind there and out like that. And then actually this, I don't have to use the second piece. And then I'm gonna actually take the second piece 
and put it on my left hand page. And I'm gonna have it kind of go like this. And I'm gonna use some of my thin 3D foam tape, which I love. I love adding a little bit of dimension to every layout that I do. I usually try to do the title or a focal photo or something on my layouts. So let's take this and I'm actually going to leave it all on one page. I'm not going to have it hang over. And there. I'm going to add a couple embellishments and then I will sign off so that you guys can check out this check this out at your leisure and let's see I've got a cute little tab piece but this sticker is a little bit too wide so I'm actually going to use my scissors to cut this down get rid of my extra piece and it's going to go behind here in my little tab that works and then one of the things that I do I like taking some stickers but making them unsticky now to do that I can grab my my reach across the camera I have a little container of cornstarch you can also use a um, the embossing buddy, that's what it's called, that you can use to go over your paper before you do like Versamark or something like that. So I'm going to add some of the stickers from the Skylark pack to this. I'm going to take, let's start off with this one. So what I do is I take my cornstarch and I make a mess, of course, with it. And that just removes the sticky from the back of it so that then what I'll do is I'll take some foam adhesive place it on the back and now I can just adhere that and give a little bit of dimension so I'm gonna I'll finish this but I will share the rest of this layout on my blog but I just wanted to show you guys kind of how I do my scrapbook process I hope you've like this video and I hope to do some more in the coming weeks and months because I've missed doing my scrapbook process videos. I haven't done one. I realized I, when I started this I hadn't done one in quite a while. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I will hopefully see you soon.